Hi Locazella and welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for being here and welcome to this series of Summer Spring Fling Trends. This week make sure you check in because we're going to be talking all things about makeup, skincare, trends, how to wear them, what to look for. It's going to be an exciting week because we're trying to push spring and summer here even though it's snowing right outside my window. So before we get started hit the subscribe button, share this video with somebody you think might like it and let's do it. So recently I polled you guys and this is what you wanted to know. You wanted to know what kind of makeup trends were hot for spring and summer and a lot of you guys wanted to know how to make them more wearable. Now of course you can take those looks right off the runway and rock them to however you want to but this is going to be my take on how to make them a little bit more wearable on every kind of an everyday basis. You're also going to see me changing outfits throughout the video because this is going to be taking me a couple days to show you how to apply each look. All right so Let's start out with one of the things that is pretty consistent over all of the years is fresh, glowing, dewy skin for spring and summer. So I'm going to show you my current favorite way to uh, get that, which is a, a hydrating skin routine. Don't worry, I'll be coming up this week with a new uh, summer spring skincare routine, updated one, I guess I should say. But then your next move is going to be going in with some sort of hydrating or an illuminizing primer. If you veer more on dehydrated, go ahead and look for Milani's uh, Glowing Primer. Um, I'm just going to be using this one by Jouer. It is their Moisture Primer. It's a new launch for them. And I like to really make sure that the skin is nice and hydrated with skincare. But then during the summer, since yes, <laughs> makeup has a tendency to slip a little bit more, Primers are always a good idea. I don't typically wear them all the time, but for this look, we're going to. All right, so face is primed and ready to rock and roll. Now I'm going to take one of my favorite long time standings. Pick your favorite tinted moisturizer. This one is by Cogent Doe. Excuse me if you hear a little bit of the noise. My basement is being done, and I just haven't been able to find time where it's quiet here in this house. So excuse the noise. Um, I'm in 123. I'll link everything below just going to pop this on. Now when we're looking for very kind of glowy, dewy skin, we want to lean towards something that is going to be like an illuminizing, uh, you know, foundation or a tinted moisturizer like this. Now this is a higher coverage tinted moisturizer. I absolutely love it because it makes the skin just look just like skin. It lasts a really long time and it just is so pretty. So you want to be able to let the skin show with this trend. You don't want to be over covered up. So if you're going to be using a full coverage luminous foundation, try mixing it with a little bit of your primer or a little bit of your moisturizer and you'll get that sheared out. And going in with your hands is going to be a really good tip because it pushes everything into the skin and makes it look like one. There's a lot of trends in this video, so stay tuned. There's about 12, okay? All right, so the skin is glowy, it's dewy, it's doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so you can see that I have dotted my concealer on in these places. Now, the reason why I like to do this is it's A, a fuller coverage concealer. So pick your favorite. This is Makeup Revolution's uh, concealer, their full coverage concealer. I like to put just a touch here, a touch here on the nose, and then in my spots where I feel like I need a little bit of extra coverage. This is going to allow you to get that, if I can say coverage 12 times, that coverage, but without having to cake a heavier, you know, foundation all over the skin. We're just kind of pinpointing where we might need a little bit of extra love. And I always need it on my nose and of course under the eyes. Now, the really beautiful thing about this tinted moisturizer is honestly, you don't really need to set it. It's not gonna be mask proof or like super, super long wearing, but to make it a little bit more long wearing, you're going to be using a uh, setting powder that is either baked or a finishing powder that has a little bit of shift to it. Today I'm gonna to go in with my Kosas new um, powders and I'm just gonna give it a nice kind of zhuzh all over the face. We're not gonna be setting this kind of to the hilt. We're just going to be using it just to make sure that we're getting a little bit more longevity out of this foundation. The reason why we wanna go for something like this, like a powder like this, is A, it is not flat. 
um, and B, it still allows the skin to kind of shift and glow and kind of look like skin. But again, we need it to last a little bit longer than just half of a day. So, all right. So from here, we're ready to rock and roll on the next tip. And this one is beautiful, but it's also something that is uh, a little bit different and a little bit fun. So we're gonna talk about bold blush. Bold blush is absolutely in for the summer and spring. Now, if you wanna use a cream, you can absolutely do that. Just use it in the same transition where I'm using these or the same placement that I'm using these. I'm going in actually with the Laura Geller blush. This is in a tropic hue. And I'm gonna take it on um, just like on a flat brush. Now, when you're doing this, you're gonna make sure that the blush goes on top of the cheekbone, just a touch on the uh, apple, but you're gonna bring it up into the temple of the eye and just a little bit along the brow bone, but I'll show you how to do that in a second. So we're just gonna take the blush. I love this blush because it has, again, a little bit of shift to it. It's not matte, it's not flat. It's going to be very flattering to the skin. It's gonna look very spring and summery. So let's talk about placement. Now this is good for any face shape. So you can have a rounder face shape, heart, a, a square, whatever. This is going to be very flattering. Um, we're going to pop it right up here. Very light pressure back and forth and then bring it on the temple, just like this. It's kind of in a C shape along this area right here. Do you see that? Yes, and so that brings that up a little bit. Now, if you want to, you can pop just a touch on the apple, but the focus is around the temple. This is something that, honestly, I see brought back every couple of years. I used to do this when I was younger, when I first, first, first started makeup, like back, I mean, this is like, oh, I don't know, 20 years ago. This is where we used to place blush but also we used to place it with different colors like blue and purple and fun stuff like that. So same idea. This trend is extremely wearable and it is a very youthful flush to the skin. You want to know something funny is a lot of these looks on the runway did not have hardly any bronzer on. So they're kind of using this blush as in the place of where the bronzer would go to kind of give that warmth to the skin. Okay. Now, the, sec the third trend that we're gonna be talking about is one of my favorite, and it just won't go anywhere, and I absolutely love it. It is the monochromatic look, and it is so easy. You can use this with any product that you want, any blush you want, any cream blush you want, anything. So pick a good blush color that you are really into. Obviously, apply your blush, and Take that same blush, I do this with bronzer all the time, so I'm just going in here, and you're going to put this all over your eyelid. And this is where the brow bone comes into play with that color, so it kind of connects the two. You're gonna bring up just a little bit higher. So you're using the same hue on the cheeks, the eyes, and the lips. That is a monochromatic look. It is universally flattering and everybody can do it and it is the quickest look that you will ever try. Now to get the general same hue for the lips, I'm going in with a Lawless uh, pencil liner and this is actually pinker than my lipstick and I'll show you why. So I don't love like a super bright pink lip and you don't have to but the trend is a little bit more of a poppier pink lip. So this is a pinker liner. Now just use a nude pink lipstick. There's the great base. And then I love this ColourPop So Juicy. It is in Small Talk and it's a pink gloss. Mmm, so good. And there you go. You have the same hue on the cheeks, the eyes, and the lips. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. It just has to be in the same family. Isn't this so springy in summer? I love this. Wow. All right, so to finish off this one, you can leave it just like this, put mascara on and call it a day. And I'll show you how to finish it up in a second. But there's also another amazing trend all about 
purple eyeliner. Now on the runways, it's vibrant purple, which is totally rock star. You can absolutely use that. But I also really love to have a little bit of a different hue of purple. This one is by uh, Urban Decay. It's an alkaline. It is a deeper purple, and it's just a personal preference. Um, when we go a little bit deeper, it is a little more modern, a little bit more sophisticated, but we're still very much on trend. The liner for this look, though, can absolutely be paired if you're doing a monochromatic look in pink, because pink and purple are generally part of the same family. The one thing about this trend is the eyeliner is pretty stark. There's not a ton of blending to it. So I like to just go in, do a small wing like you see here. Just take a tiny little brush and just gently ever so slightly diffuse it. You don't have to make this to be a diffused liner or like a fox faux liner. You just want to gently diffuse it just so the line isn't so harsh. This trend also is only on the top lash line. It is not on the bottom. I rarely saw any liner on the bottom unless you wait till you see this emerald smoky eye. It's amazing, we'll do. But this is basically a very graphic liner. It's a very stark liner. And I love using pencils because if your hand's a little shaky, they're a lot more forgiving. And the liner's a little bit big, to be honest with you. So how to make them work for a more of a hooded eye or a smaller eye shape is to go bigger on the outside corner and leave the inside corners either bare or just a little bit of liner. So again, you're still on trend. It's still a graphic liner, but it's made to your eye shape. All right, so here is everything on. I'm actually just going in and punching the blush up a little bit because, again, the trend is bolder blush. So you do want to be a little heavier handed than you normally would be. And I normally do this when my makeup is all done. I'll go in and see if I have enough blush on. Very, like, reminds me of, like, 80s blush to be honest with you so anyway so here is the first set of trends and I like to finish off a glowy makeup look with the elf hydrating coconut mist and I just kind of spray it all over kind of far away and then you want to give it time to set or not set but just dry and if you really want to you can kind of press your beauty blender in just like that and what that does is it melts the powder into your foundation or tinted moisturizer and just gives a beautiful, fresh glow. I am digging this blush right now. So I hope that this helps you out. Let's work on some more trends. Make sure you comment below on which one so far is your favorite and that you are looking forward to trying. All right, so before we jump into some other trends I'm gonna show you how to recreate, I wanna to talk to you through some ones that I'm not going to create because I just, I, don't, I just don't vibe with them and I don't feel like they're really, honestly, a, a way to wear them um, on a daily basis. One is going to be, and I'll show you a picture here, is going to be rhinestones on the eyes. Of course, anybody can wear them, but literally placing rhinestones on the eyes is just not for me. So if you really want to try the trend, you can actually put them along the lash line. They make them already made, and that might be fun for a night out or something like that. But this trend is like literally putting rhinestones all over the eye. Looks really pretty on the runway. I just, for me, don't think it's a wearable look. So, but that is one trend that's big for summer and spring. Maybe probably for like the maybe teenagers, I would say, they could rock that. All right, now I love this trend. Now it's something that I don't typically use or would wear, but I love that it's coming back because I want to go buy a burgundy one, but the trend is blue mascara. So the great way to do that is to um, put a little bit of a normal color or like a, a neutral color is the word I was looking for along this area right here and then go buy your favorite purple mascara and that is something that's really fun. I would pair it with just like a really simple face, a nice nude lip and um, you know that's kind of a little pop that you could do. It's going to be great for nighttime I think or maybe if you're out by the beach and you wear makeup. Uh, but colored mascara has been around for a very long time. Color uh, CoverGirl has a bunch of colored mascaras. And you're going to see this from all the brands now because these are the trends that are coming up. So, but I love to use colored mascaras. Like I love to use red, burgundy, hunter green is stunning. So if you want to get on the trend but don't want to go quite as bold as blue, check out the other colors that I suggested.